In this lesson, we will learn about the scope of a variable. Scope of variable means the part or the portion of the program where that variable is accessible. For example, in case of variables inside a function, those are accessible only inside that function by default. If we have multiple functions and different variable names are common between those, it can be very confusing how the values of each variable is linked to each other or not. Many times even using some debugging tools cannot resolve the confusion leading to logical errors. So it is important that you know about the scope of a variable and the ways by which we can update their scope. So let's start with that. I will start by creating a simple test function. Suppose in the function there is variable x equal to 10 and I'm just printing that value of x inside that function. Now I can have another function and inside this function again we have a variable x but this time let's say it has a value 20. Now I will write the main program which is outside both of these functions. Here I am again defining a variable x and the value is 100 this time. I will call both of the functions. And then there is a simple print statement printing the value of x inside the main program. Now the scope of the variables inside the function is known as the local scope. By local it means they are defined only within that function. Outside the function they actually don't exist. So x equal to 10 inside the first function has nothing to do with the x of the second function or the x of the main function. So if we will run that, the main function was calling the function 1 and function 2. But you can see the values of x on all three locations of the program has no effect on each other. Let me just remove one function. Now we have a simple case where we have one function and main program and both are having the value x. But you can see from the output both x are different. Now suppose if I remove this x of the main program. Now what do you think will be the output of line number 8 where we are printing the value of x in the main program. It should actually generate an error because there is no x in the main program. Let's see that over here. And we have the error. Now let's redefine that in the main program and this time I will delete that in the function. Now what do you think will be the output of this line number 3 where we are printing the value of x and there is no x inside that function. Will there be some error? Let's see that. And this time there is no error. So the x inside the test function is having the value 100 which is basically the x of the main program. So what's happening over here is that the main program variables are accessible inside the function. Basically the main program variables are known as global variables because they have global scope meaning that they are accessible in the whole program. But when I have the same variable in the function then that is a local variable. So what happens is that when python will be executing line number 3 where we are using the value x inside the function. If there is x defined inside the function which means the x is local so python will take that value. But if there is no x defined in the function then python will look for that in other scopes the first will be the enclosing scope and that is something we will discuss in a while and the third is the global scope so in this case if we don't have x inside the function meaning it is not in the local scope it is also not inside the enclosing scope we'll see that detail in a while so the python will look for that in the global scope and in the global scope it will find the value of x of the main program which is 100 and that value will be used on line number 3 Let's see the detail of local and global scope. There is a built-in python function named as locals which we can execute anywhere in the program maybe inside the function or maybe inside the main program and it will return all local variables at that point in the form of a dictionary. If you don't know about the dictionary there is nothing to worry because we just have to view the output. So inside the test function I am printing the local variables. I will comment out all other print statements. Now if I run the code you can see an empty dictionary because there is no variable defined inside the function so there is nothing in the local so the dictionary is empty now let's uncomment this x equal to 10 and this time you can see one variable on the output its name is x and the value is 10 we can also see the global variables inside the test function
This is the local variable and we have many global variables which are basically the variables of the main program. But because they are global, they are accessible inside the function as well. You might not understand the names of these variables but just see this last variable which is x and having the value 100 because x inside the main program was having the value 100. Now let's see the local variables of the main program. As I said earlier, all variables in the main program are global variables but of course they are local as well for the main program. So if I run this, I can see all these variables which are basically the same as the global variables. I can also print the global variables. And you can spend some time to see both locals and globals are same for the main program. Now a function can have some input argument. For example y over here. I am printing the value of y inside the function as well. Now in the main program when I will be using this function I must provide the value of the input argument for example 30. Now let's print the value of x and y in the main program. You can see an error is generated for the variable name y because the variable y is local in the function and is not accessible in the main program. We can also see that by printing the locals inside the function. And you can see y is the local variable of the function. For the next discussion I will remove the input argument y. Now I don't have x in the function as well. But we know this x on line number 2 will get the value from the main program. Now suppose I have another variable inside the function. Let's say y equal to 50. And then I have x equal to y. So what do you think this x is local or global? This x should of course be a local variable because we are defining it inside the function. So it has nothing to do with the main program x. Let's run that. And you can see x is 50 inside the function. Now what if I make it like y equal to x plus 10. So when the function body will be executed, the first line is line number 2 where we are using the variable x but that x is not defined over there. So it should get the value of x from the main program. But then what will be the effect of line number 3? On line number 3 we are saying x equal to y. The x on line number 2 appears to be a global x because there is no x defined over there yet. But on line number 3, if I am assigning some value to x, so will that change the value of x of the main program? Let's see that. And we have the error. The error says the local variable x referenced before assignment. What's happening is that with line number 3 as x equal to y, it means we are assigning a value to variable x so that x should be a local variable. And on line number 2 we are using that x and because that x is a local variable and its value is being assigned on next line and hence we are getting the error. Maybe you were thinking that the line number 3 should update the value of x of the main program. But there is a way by which we can make the variable x of the function a global variable. And that is by using the keyword global followed by the variable name. So now this global x means we are explicitly defining the variable x as global. So it means this x is same as the x of the main program. And now if I will change this x over here, that change will be affected in the main program as well. So x is 100 in the main program. This global x means it is the same x of the main program and y equal to x plus 10 means y will get the value 110 and then that value is assigned to variable x. So let's run this code and you can see error is not generated this time. Now what will be the value of the x in the main program? You can see that value is also 110. So when a variable is defined as global in a function, it can change the value of that variable and that change will get reflected everywhere because that is a global variable. So even I don't have the y over here, directly I can assign some other value to the variable x and now that means the main program x is also 10. 
Now what can be the use of this scenario? At times there can be a need to update a variable of the main program inside some user defined function. For example, in some game program, there might be different functions for the different game moves and then there is a score variable in the main program. So the functions for the different game moves should be able to update the score variable. In that case, that score variable should be a global variable. But I must also warn you that overusing the global variables can mess up the thing. Consider a few functions, updating a few main program variables, then it can be really a challenge to track the sequence how those are being updated. Hence use this only when it is really needed and you know what exactly you are doing. Now let's have a second function as well. In this function again I have a variable with the name x. Now there is a possibility that I could keep the variable of the second function as local so it means this x is different from the first function x and the x of the main program. I am calling both of the functions in the main program. So let's run the code. You can see x is 10 inside the first function. Then in second function it is 50 but that 50 has not changed the x of the main program. The x of the main program is 10 because the first function changed that to 10. Now if I make the x of the second function global as well, x is 100 in the main program at the start of this program but on line number 12 first function is being called that will make the value of x equal to 10. So now the main program x is also 10 but then on line number 13 function 2 is being called and that will make x equal to 50 which is also global. So it means the x of the main program will also get the value 50. So on line number 14 it should be displayed as 50. You can see that over here. Now if I change the order of these two statements where the two functions are called. Now the function 1 is called after the function 2. So that will determine the final value of x in the main program. So here you can see as I mentioned earlier that multiple functions updating a main program variable can be confusing sometimes. There is also a possibility that some of the variables of the function could be global and some could be local. So I am defining two variables in the main program x and y and I am defining the variable y in both of the functions. But only the variable x is declared as global in both of those functions. So it means changing the value of y in the functions has no effect on the y of the main program. You can see it is still 100. So that was all about local and global variables but we also have two other types of variable scopes. Generally we call it as LEGV rule where L is for the local, E is for enclosing, G is for global and B is for built-in. So anywhere in the program, if a variable is accessed, Python will first look into the locals. If it is found over there, it will pick the value from there. And if it is not over there, it will move to the enclosing scope. If not there, it will move to the global scope and finally to the built-in scope. So let's see what is the enclosing scope. For that I will remove the second function. Now the enclosing scope is meant for the inner function. Now what is an inner function? Inner function is a function written inside another function. So let me first write one inner function. You can see I am defining this function inside the body of the test function. Let's name it like test inner and here again I can have a variable x with some value like 50. I have the same print statement. Now over here I am outside the test inner function but still I am inside the test function and here I am calling the test inner function. You might be thinking what can be the use of an inner function. There can be some cases for example one function might need some other calculations and for that it needs some inner function. Now you will be thinking that it can also be done with a simple function without making that as inner function. But if we have an inner function it means that it can be called only inside the outer function. So if I will try to call that function in the main program, you can see I am not getting any intelligence help for the test inner function because it is not accessible outside the outer function. There can be a few other reasons but we cannot discuss those at the moment.
This inner function is also known as enclosed function because it is enclosed in the outer function and the outer function is also known as enclosing function. Now if I run this code at this stage, the inner function variable x is local over there and it will have no effect on the x of the outer function or the x of the main program. You can see all three x have their own values. Now what if I make the inner function x variable as a global variable? It will going to have the same effect, meaning that this x is same as the x of the main program. So if it is changed, it will change the x of the main program as well. But it will have no effect on the x of the outer function. You can see the x of the outer function is 10 before applying the inner function and after applying the inner function. Now there can be a requirement that the inner function variable shares the scope of the outer function which is highlighted over here meaning that if I change the value of x inside the inner function it should change the value of x of the outer function. We saw that it is not possible using the global because that will link it to the main program rather than the outer function. And that's where we have the enclosing scope meaning that the enclosed function is having the scope of its enclosing function and for that we use the keyword non-local. It means that x is not local now, but it is not global as well. And now this x is same as the x of the outer function. So now see carefully what will be the output of this program. x of the test function is 10 for very obvious reason. Then the x of the inner function is 50, but because that x is non-local, so it has also changed the x of the outer function. You can see that on this output. And that has not changed the main program x. So that's how the local and closing and global scopes are managed in Python. Just to wind up the LEGB rule, I'm making the x of the inner function as local again. Now all three x are local and you can see all three have their own values. Now if I remove this x of the inner function, so on this line number 6, where we are using the variable x, the python will first look into the local scope, it will not find the x over there. Then it will look for that in the enclosing scope, which is the scope of the outer function, and over there x is equal to 10. So you can see it got the value 10. Now if I don't have the x in the outer function as well, for this line number 3, there is no x in the local scope, so python will look for the enclosing scope, there is no enclosing scope of this outer function, because it is not enclosed in any other function, so python will move to the next scope, which is the global scope inside the main program, and over there x is equal to 100, so on line number 3 x should be 100. Similarly on line number 5, there is no x in the local scope, so python will move to the enclosing scope, there is enclosing scope, but there is no x over there, so it will move to the global scope, which is the main program, and the x is 100 over there. And now you can see, all x are having the value 100, but of course we cannot change that x in the inner function or the outer function. We did not discuss about the built-in scope, it's not difficult. There is a predefined built-in scope having the names of different variables. If you want to see those, you can import the module named as built-ins and then you can print the directory of that module. And here you can see different built-in names. We have used many of those. For example, this len is for the length function, which gives the number of elements inside any iterable, for example, list. So suppose I want to define my own length function, and instead of number of elements inside the list, I want to return the maximum value of the list. So can I do that? Actually, Python does not stop us doing this. I can define the function with the name len, x is the input iterable, for example, list, and I am returning the maximum value of that list. So now if I have a list with 7 elements and if I will apply the length function on that list, following the LEGB rule, the python will look for this function in the local scope and it will find that there because we have the function on line number 5. So python will execute this function. You can see the output is 4 which is the maximum value inside the list. It's not a good practice to create a function with the same name as of the built-in function. If for some reason I have to do that, I should name it something else, for example my length. And now when I will run this code, 
you can see the output is 7 which is the length of the list so in this case the function len was not found in the local scope it was not there in the enclosing scope and it was not there in the global scope so finally python found that inside the built-in scope and it is executed from there now there is one last part of this video which is not related to scope of the variables but it is a very simple topic so I will cover it in the same video. It is about creating your own module. We have used many modules for example math module, random module, stress draw but we can also create our own module. Why should we create our own module? If we know we have to use a function in many programs, then instead of creating that in the individual programs, I can create that inside a module and then I can import that module in the program where I need that function. For example, we use the logic of prime numbers in many programs and every time we were writing the logic of the prime number. A good solution is that we will create a module and we will define the function is prime over there and later on we can import that in any program. So creating a module is like creating any other python file. So I'm naming it as mymodule.py. Now inside this file, I will define the function isPrime. It will have one input argument, which will be the number to find if it is a prime or not. I will use the for loop to check if there is any factor from 2 to the square root of that number. Because we discussed many times, if there is no factor till the square root of a number, there won't be any after that. If there is a factor, we will return false. And outside the for loop, it means there was no factor, so we can return true. Now I'm writing another program, and here I can import my module, just like importing any other module. You can also see the IntelliSense help for the module. I can specify the function which I want to import. At the moment I have only one function, but of course I can have as many as I want. Now I'm taking a number from the user. I will apply the function on that number and if the function returns true, I will print that it is a prime number. And else, it is not a prime number. One important thing while creating the module is placing the module file. At the moment the file my module is saved inside the working folder and that's why we can import that in any program inside this working folder. When we import a module, Python basically looks for that module on some certain locations and the first of that location is the working folder of that program. If you want to see all paths where Python looks for that module, you can see that using the sys module. So I'm importing the module. Inside the module, there is a list variable named as path and this list contains all paths where Python will be looking for this module from its first element till the last element. I can print the list but it will be better if I print each element on a new line. I also want to show one more thing that in your program if you select some lines and then run the code it will execute only those selected lines. For example I am selecting these three lines and if I will run the code only these three lines will be executed. So you can see the first path in the list is the working directory of this program. So we have the module in this directory and we can use that. Then we have some other paths which are some installation folders of the python. But what if I want to keep my module file in some other directory of my own choice and still I want to use that module. That is also possible. For that we have to change the system environment variables. In case of windows on the search bar you can write environment variables. You can see this edit system environment variables. Click that. This window will open, click the environment variables on this upper window which shows the user variables, we have to create a new variable. So click the new button, name the variable as python path and the variable value should be the directory where you want to keep the module. For example, if I want to keep the module on desktop, I must put the address of the desktop. I'll copy that and paste in here. Just click ok multiple times. And we are done. Now we need to restart the IDE for the changes to get affected. So at the moment if I will run this code, the desktop will not be added. So I should just restart the IDE.
This is the working directory and then you can see the path of desktop over there. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.